Now that you covered some basics of the Blender's interface and how to navigate to the 3D viewport and how to move the objects, it's time to create a rocket. First of all, check out this part right here. This is representation of my mouse, right, left, middle mouse button and what of the keyboard shortcut I'm pressing. So have that in mind, but I will also work you through the process. We will start with this basic cube and we will model the rocket from the cube. In case you deleted this cube for any reason like this, you will always uh, be able to bring it back by going to add mesh and then choose cube right here. Another way to add objects to the scene is press keyboard shortcut, which I'm always using and get used to keyboard shortcuts, shift A and then choose cube or any other mesh. Also another thing where, see, see this, this cursor right here, wherever this cursor, 3D cursor is, for example, it's right here. And if you're like me, choose right mouse button as a main a selection button, then with the left mouse button, you can change the position of the cursor. Wherever this cursor is, when you are adding a new object, it will be added there. To bring it back, back on the world center, you will need to press Shift S and then go here, cursor toward origin. In case you switch to left mouse button for the selection, then to move this 3D cursor, you need to press Shift and right mouse button. So this is it, just a bit different operation. Shift and right, right mouse button and you're ready to go. So again, Shift S, cursor to world origin. Okay, now to edit this cube, we need to go from object mode, you can see right here, to edit mode, obviously. In edit mode, we can see a few points here and a few lines and few faces. So every single object in 3D workspace has vertices, edges and uh, also faces. So let me walk you through that. Here at the top left corner, we have three buttons, which represents vertices, these points, then lines or edges and these uh, faces of the cube. You can also press one, two or three on a keyboard to go and switch between them. So vertices are these small points right here. If you press G, you can move them. And in that way, you can shape your object and create model, whatever you want. Also, this is one vertex. More of them are called vertices and this is it. Also these lines, these are edges and also you can select edge and move it however you want and in that way shape whatever you want to shape in a 3D workspace. And also the faces, these are the faces and also you can move them however you want and do your thing with them or rotate them and like that model whatever you want. I will reset everything, undo. And that's one way how you can select the model. So one, two or three and select either vertices, edges or faces, or there is much faster way that I prefer and I will just show you this. You can choose if you want to use it or not, but I advise you to do it because it's amazing. And that's to go to uh, use machine tools, just Google machine tools, or I will leave it down there in the description. So machine tools, it's completely free. Use this standard version, it's zero dollars and download it as a zip file. Remember where you put the zip file in and then go to edit, preferences and go to add-ons and here go to install. I have my plugin folder and here find machine tools. It's right here and go install. I already have it installed. So I'll just search it here. So machine tools, you just need to check it here and you're ready to go. Go here, click save preferences and close this window. And now you can do the same, but with that difference, when you press tab key, you will get this pie menu and you can choose either to use, to go to the object mode or to go from object to edit or directly to face edit. So now we can directly edit faces or vertex edits, etc. without clicking on this or one, two, three on a keyboard. And also this is really fast because if you just uh, click on a tab and move up, you will go from object to edit, move down, you're already in edge mode, move right, you're already in face mode and so on and so forth. So this is really fast way of moving and editing. Trust me, get used to this and your life will be much easier. So this is it. Also see now these lines are much uh, brighter to say, and that's because the cavity is turned on in Blender and it's really cool to have it on because sometimes you will have better representation of what you're doing, but by default, it's right here under the cavity. This is turned on. This is how you have it by default. And we will continue like this for this uh, demonstration. Okay, now that we know that, 
we need to make this rocket. Blender is amazingly good at real life scales. So whenever you're making something, try to make it in a real life scales because of all other things, how the light is bouncing, materials, other scales, um, and uh, that will work much better. So do that. I will go right here, press N on a keyboard to get the side menu. And I will go to the item and here I will change the Z dimensions from two to six, just type six in. So that means that my cube is two by two by six meters. Also, you can go and change meters to inches. You can change it by going here to scene type properties and go to units and go from metric to imperial. And now we will have everything in inches and this is it. I like metric and I will leave it like that. Okay, we have two by two by six meters and let's continue making our rocket. So the shape of the rocket should be pointy at the top and have a little bit belly like and then again, a little bit narrow at the bottom. And to do that, we will go to face mode and I will select this face, press S on a keyboard to scale it down like that and press one on the keyboard to go to front view. And now we need, if, if we go down here and select this and also scale it down, we are not gain, getting anywhere. We need to add more edges in order to uh, work with this. So we will add edge loops. Edge loop is easily added by pressing Control or Command R when you are in edit mode, Control R. And you can see this is an edge loop. If we scroll with the mouse wheel, we are having more and more edge loops here. We just want to add for now one in the center. Okay. And you can move it wherever you want, but I will press escape to be exactly the center. I will press scale S for scale and bring it back something a little bit wider than the down portion is S again to sh maybe a little bit wider. Also what I like to do, I like to add another here, control command R scale it S for scale and add another one here and maybe one R press escape and uh, scale it and Let's see, maybe just a little bit here. And if we want to select this one, we are selecting only one. Remember, we need to select the whole loop. In order to select the edge loop, you're selecting it by pressing Alt or Option key and then select with the mouse, whichever mouse button you're using, left or right, but Alt and that, it will select the edge loop and then press one to go to front view. It's easier for me and just make it a little bit more, to have a little bit bigger belly. And also we can go down here, tab and right to go to the faces. So tab and right to go to the faces and go a little bit down. Let's see, scale it a little bit down. And this is pretty decent shape. Okay, I really like this. Now you can say, yeah, this is square, but our rocket needs to be round. Well, it will be round and we will do that in a moment. I will go back tab and up to go to object mode and we will add our first modifier. Modifiers, all modifiers lives here in the wrench icon, add a modifier. And we want to subdivide this. Let me go to the front view. We want to add subdivision surface modifier that will add even more these subdivisions like you're adding uh, edge loops, etc. So when you add it once, it will make this more round and it will practically double the amount of edges and uh, faces, etc. And it will average uh, this. So how this works, let me show you really quickly. Let's go here to annotation and let's turn it off for now. So here we have one, I will, I will draw it here. We have one vertex, here we have another one. And when you add subdivision surface, it will add another one, but also it will average these two. So it will add somewhere here and then you will have something like this. Now, if you subdivide it again, it will add one here and one here, and then it will go like this, like, yeah, when one here also, like this, like this, and this will be more curved. And if you add more and more, you will have really nice smooth curve. Okay, let's uh, go here and annotations and clear this out. So this is how, how this works, but we now, uh, added just one subdivision here. And if you boost this up, one, two, three, four, five, six, you can see how smooth is this, how really nice our cube uh, gets. And we don't want this. This is not good. Why? Well, because 
the more subdivision you have, the more polygons, the more faces you have in the scene, more vertices, more edges, so more polygons here, and the render time will take forever, and also the computer can uh, get slower because the render needs to recalculate all the light bounces, materials, all the things that are going on behind the scenes, and the more polygons you have, the, the higher, um, the bigger time, the calcul calculation time is, and the math behind this is more crazy. So you always want to have the, the less amounts of polygons, but as much as it's pretty nice as a result. So let me show you the trick here. We just want to add two of them. This is pretty nice. One, mm, it's okay, but two is much better. And there is a trick. If you press right click and go to Shade Smooth, so you want this, or Shade Auto Smooth, is the same, I will show you the difference. If you go to Shade Smooth, it will shade this smooth, and basically you will have the same result visually, same result like if you added here six levels. But with that difference, if we now zoom this, you will still see these jagged edges, because this is just how the shading of the model is, how the light is bouncing around these polygons, and it's representing as a really nice, smooth, shaded uh, surface. So we want that, but still we have these edges. And in the games, this is normal, you can see a lot of these in the games, a lot of models are really nice from the surface, but when you see the edges, they are jagged because they have low amount of polygon in order to uh, have a better performance of the game. We are now used smooth shade, but let me show you really quickly. If we go to this icon here and go to normals, this auto smooth is not checked, but you always want to check this auto smooth. You will see later why. If you right click and just uh, say, say uh, shade smooth, auto, it will automatically check this. So I will leave it unchecked just to see if you're sometimes getting into trouble with this. Check the, if the normals here are auto smoothed. Okay, so this is how it looks. Now I will go back to face view and we still have the representation of the outline of our model before the modifier is applied. So if we turn off this monitor icon here, that means that we are turning off the representation in the viewport. If we turn the photo off, that will turn this modifier for the render view. So we always want to have this on, but from time to time, it's easier to turn this off to work with the model uh, without seeing it, uh, how, how it looks like by applying the modifier. But now we can see both of these and I will press Ctrl or Command R and add another edge loop right here. Click and move it down. And by moving it all the way down, what this will do, it will flatten the edges. Do not be so round, it will be more flat. Why? Well, because you already saw what subdivision surface is doing. It's making curves. The more subdivisions you have, it will be more curved because of these adding these more edges, more vertices, etc. So the less space between the edges, the less curve can be visible. So basically it will still be a curve, but less visible, it will be almost a straight line. So this is why we are adding these lines, these edge loops, and to make this like it's around, it's a flat down there. But before we do that, let's undo it. What we want to do is to go to down bottom view and continue to model our rocket. So if you don't want to be confused, let's just hide out this. And I will just select this face down there, press I on a keyboard. We will inset this and click and then press E to extrude. So it will extrude down, E, it will extrude. You can go back to this view and if you want to move this up or down, just press G and Z, it will move up and down. So see how much you want to extrude. So for example, this, I don't know, this looks decent. It will be the engine of our rocket. And also we can go I to insert and E to extrude, but this time up, extrude up, just to have a little bit more space. And also if you want to see it from this view, but you cannot see where this extrusion is inside, it's really cool to go to the this X-ray view, or press Alt and Z on a keyboard. And now we can press G and Z and move it up as much as you want, so we don't need to do it too much. Something here is really cool for this purpose. And let's 
go and hide this view. And this is how it looks if we go back and check in our subdivision surface modifier and go back to the object tab and object view. Really nice shape of the rocket, but we want to add these loop cuts here to make this more flat. So go back to edit view. Edit view is always when you're editing something, edit something, etc. So tab up. And now I will go to front view by pressing one control command R to add a loop cut and go down here. Also one down here, but also one up here. Let me show you what this does. So if I add this one and move it up, see how it will make this more flat. So I will move it all the way here just before I don't want to move, push it in just before it touches the second edge here. And also, I can add loop cuts in between. So press Control Command R. And you can see where the loop cut will go. So I want to go here, click and just I want to push it out to make me this more flat and also another one here and push this in to make this more flat. And this looks really decent. If you go to object mode, tab and object mode, I'm really happy with the shape of the rocket. Now let's add few details. We can go to our subdivision here and we can apply it. This arrow down here and say apply. And that way we are doing the same thing like we are doing in Photoshop. We are working destructively in this way where the modifier is not applied. It's non destructive workflow because you can always go back and forth with this and add more or uh, remove some subdivisions and that way it's non destructive. So if you apply it, you're done, you cannot go back. But in this case, we want to apply it because still this model has pretty low amount of, of uh, polygons here. And this is perfectly okay. And in order to see this view, this is wireframe view, the shortcut is Shift Z. Okay, now let's add some details here. Let's go to edit view. And I want to see where our point of the rocket will be. So I want to have this as a point and I will go to edge view. So uh, tab and edge or just tab and drag it down. And I want to select all the edges around and instead of holding shift and select all around, you remember the shortcut alt and click and it will select the whole loop here. That's one thing. Then I want to go to the front view by pressing one and go down here and I want to select. Let me see. I'm holding shift and alt. So to select both of these and also shift and alt and let's select this one. Okay, this seems pretty nice. And now I will add a bevel. So bevel is basically, you know, what is bevel in real life? Also, it's here. Basically, uh, in, in this case, we are splitting this edge or this line into two or more lines. And if I zoom here by moving the scroll wheel, so this is how we can zoom. I will press Control Command B to add bevel and just move the mouse. And this is it. We are just splitting this line into two. If you scroll, uh, use the scroll wheel a few times, you will add more and more lines in between. And in this case, I just want to go all the way back with the mouse and just splitting once. And for example, this is pretty good. If you press and hold shift, it will go more smoothly. So you can have more control about the size of the bevel. And when you press left mouse button, you're done. So this seems pretty decent. And now what I like to do, I want to extrude this in. So to extrude again, the shortcut is E. And let me show this in perspective view. If I press E now, I can extrude, but it's crazy. It's doing crazy things. But if I press E and then S to scale, I can scale it in or out. But you can see how it's going down. And we don't want that. We want to scale it, but not on the Z axis, only on the Y and X axis. And you remember to scale it on only to scale it not on one axis, you need to press shift and that axis. So shift Z, we don't want to scale it on Z axis, we want just X and Y and I want to scale it a little bit in like this. 
just to add it a little bit more details and I'm really happy with this. And now go back to object mode. So see, we have some details here, but really strange shading. Now the rocket, hmm, this shading is really bad. And also if we add another subdivision surface modifier, that can help, but let me show you before that, why is this? This is because here we didn't click auto smooth. And we ha when you have this kind of shading, bad shading, check out the normal. So either auto smooth or normal needs to be flipped. We will talk about that in the future. So auto smooth and automatically this is much better. Also, the angle here depends on what you want to uh, see and how this will be smoothed. So 30 is the default value is okay for this, but sometimes you need to play with this in order to get the proper result. And also I want to add another subdivision modifier because of these edges, they're too much. So subdivision surface, one will work, maybe two, two, two is also perfect. And I'm pretty happy with this result right here. You can add the details on the rocket however you want by beveling other lines and extrude it like I did here. I just want to add a few more details here on this part of the rocket. So Alt and select and outlet select and control or command B to bevel this a little bit, maybe like that and E to extrude, S to scale and uh, yeah, this time we don't need to press shift Z because this looks really decent for me and I will press like that and go back to edit view and let's see, I like it. I will use, no, I, will, I will use it like this. Yeah, I will fly in this circuit. I will leave it like this and now we will add a window and we will use a different modifier. So for that, join me in next video, click here and let's continue making this rocket.